let's go. Church, welcome to Vibe mm-hmm. at Home. We are so excited that you've taken time today to join us yes. from all over the world. Right, we hope that you're gathering in homes everywhere yes. today. Yes. Uh, I think people are chiming in from... Well, where? all the usual places, of okay. course. We've got right. Honolulu, we've got Chicago, Austin, the Bay Area. But even more than that, uh, we've got people from New York today, right. even Australia, down under, welcome all the Aussies. Yeah. And uh, even probably in Afghanistan, in the middle of the desert, yeah. wherever you're joining us from, we're so glad you've taken the time today to worship. God with us. It's going to be a very exciting day indeed. Yes. But can we be the first people, in fact, to say Happy New Year? Yes. We trust 2020. 2020, it's going to be an incredible new year and a new decade. Probably the best one they've ever had yet, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so too. And uh, we also want to say we hope you had a great Christmas together with your family and your friends and, uh, you know, trust that you're enjoying that time together. But today is Vibe at Home. And we're so excited for what God has in store as we set ourselves up for the brand new year. What you can do today is you can interact. There's the comments section. Oh, yes. We, we want to hear. We want to say, us. yeah, heart, amen, mm-hmm. say, preach it. Uh, you can give some props to the worship team. They right. really love that. And uh, we would love some engagement today is what we're looking for. So why don't you do this? If you are uh, with somebody right now, why don't you grab mm-hmm. their hand? Because we love to do something here at Vive Church. We love to pray. Right. We don't just have one prayer meeting. We pray mm-hmm. at every Every meeting. And so before we do anything today, we want to pray together. So let's lift up our, our prayer. God, we thank yes. you for this moment. Thank you. God, we thank you for our church, yes. our extended church across mm-hmm. the globe. God, our family, friends, and all the people that are gathering together today. Mm-hmm. God, we pray a blessing upon us. Yes, Lord. And Lord, as we stand at the end of one year, ready to jump into the next year, God, mm-hmm. I pray your favour, I pray your blessing. And God, I pray for restoration. Right. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are a provider. Yes. And so God, today we want to glorify you. Mm-hmm. Today we want to want to lift your name. Today, we want to worship you. We pray this in Jesus' yes, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hey, so why don't you stand with us? We're going to go into worship.
Isn't that some amazing worship? I love our worship. We love our worship team and uh, just the songs coming out of our house. So amazing. Hey, something else we do every time we come together. We don't just pray. We don't just worship. We love to come around the Word of God and we love to give here at Vive Church. Yes. So I wanted my, my babe, my Kira, to give you Velvet Hammer to give you an offering message today. Awesome. I just want to encourage you this morning around our giving. And I just find that Paul was one of the greatest encouragers mm -hmm. there ever was. And it feels so good to have some 
somebody, amen, a gifting in you. That's so true. And so I just want to talk about that this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Beloved ones, we must tell you about the grace God poured out upon the churches of Macedonia. For even during a season of severe difficulty and tremendous suffering, they became even more filled with joy. Mm. From the depths of their extreme poverty, a super abundant joy overflowed into an act of extravagant generosity. For I can verify that they spontaneously gave, not only according to their means, but far beyond what they could afford. I love wow, that. I love that. Um, it also says they actually begged for us for the privilege of sharing in this ministry of giving wow. to God's holy people who are living in poverty. They exceeded our expectations by first dedicating themselves fully to the Lord and then to us according to God's pleasure. Mm -hmm. That is why we appeal to Titus since he was the one who gave you, uh, who got you started and encouraged right. you to give so he could help you complete this generous undertaking on your behalf. Mm. You do well and excel in every respect. And here is where he is just amening what they right. are great at. He says, in unstoppable faith, right. in powerful preaching, in revelation knowledge, and in your passionate devotion, wow. and in sharing the love we have shown to you. So make sure that you excel in every grace-filled generosity. So good. And I just want to tell you, Vive Church, I want to encourage you today that you excel in the gift of generosity so and giving. That's right. And so as we come to 2019's close, I just want to encourage you to continue to use that gift that's on our church and on our lives to give generously as we enter a new decade, 2020. And so I just want to pray for you because you excel in this. You're yes. amazing at it. And Father, we just thank you that as we come all over the world today, wherever we're at to give, God, I thank you that your blessing is upon it. I yes. thank you that your church is being advanced all across the earth. Yes and we get to be a part of it. We love you, God, and thank you for allowing us to partner with building your church. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Hey, that's a great word. And I do love to be commended. I love to uh, yes, be do. built up. Yes, so thanks for that. Uh, we love you, generous <laughs> church. You know, we, uh, we're so glad to be a part of what God's doing all over the globe. And, you know, we this today is Vive at Home. Mm. And this is something that God has put on our heart for 2020, to see Vive at Home locations all over the world, in places where there isn't currently a Vive Church, we've mm -hmm. got different people gathering together in homes. And what a beautiful expression of the community and the expansion of the kingdom of Jesus yes. Christ. And today is one of those examples today. So we hope you're enjoying yourself. And we have got a special word for you today. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I'm excited. We went to a very special location to bring this word to you, really to kind of frame what we're about to step into as we step into the year 2020. Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoy. Hey there, church. Can I be one of the first people to say Happy New Year? What an exciting time we're in. We are about to not just enter a new year, but we're about to enter a new decade. And what we're walking into is no small new year. We're stepping into 2020. I mean, this is significant. I remember way back, way back when we transitioned into the year 2000, some of you would remember how significant that was. You know, it was a stepping into a new millennium and there was so much thoughts and anticipation about what that would mean. We didn't know if the world was gonna end. We didn't know if the computers around the globe were gonna shut down and we were gonna see Armageddon. We didn't know what was gonna happen. But funny enough, life, went on. But I do think there is something significant when we begin to enter a significant year like 2020. See, the year 2020 speaks of vision, 2020 vision. It speaks of clarity. And even when we think of 2020, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I can remember way back when I was a kid, even back in the 80s, and you would think of times and seasons and years like the year 2020, that was projected as the future. Like that was what the future was based off. In the year 2020, we were meant to have flying cars. In the year 2020, we were meant to have hoverboards that, that floated and took us around. In the year 2020, that's what the Jetsons were based off. All these ideas are futuristic, what would take place and what that would represent. And I know for me, maybe for you too, maybe we had expectations of what our life would look like in 2020. By the time I get to that place and to that age, I don't know what, how successful you thought you would be. I don't know what you thought your life would represent and all the elements that you would have in your life. But I wonder now that you're on the cusp of 2020, 
Have you fulfilled those things? Are you where you thought you would be? Or is life kind of more a little bit disappointing? Maybe I'm not where I want to be yet. I want to read you a passage of scripture. It's here in 2 Timothy. And you know, I love Timothy. I love 1 Timothy. I love 2 Timothy. Because what we get is we get a letter from Paul to Timothy. Paul being kind of like a father figure, not so much as apostle Paul, leader of the churches and the revolution of Jesus Christ and bringing the gospel to the Gentiles. What we have here is Paul in his wisdom, in life experience, connecting with a young man in faith, a young man in leadership, giving him some incredible wisdom. And he says this in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. He says, My dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Verse 3, endure sufferings along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules. And hardworking farmers should be first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. He says, Think about what I'm saying. The Lord will help you understand all these things. I love this because he actually gives Timothy not a very self-explanatory instruction, but kind of a complex one. He gives him some instructions that might not make sense immediately. In fact, when you read through it, it kind of, you, you feel like where, you know where he's going. He's saying, enjoy, endure sufferings like me, like a soldier, like an athlete, like a farmer. And he's giving these illustrations of what you should, how you should live and what life is going to look like. And then he says, I, I pray that the Lord will help you understand these things. In other words, he's saying, I'm not going to give you any more understanding, but I'm just praying that in time, you'll get revelation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we see is, Paul is giving him an expectation of trial. Paul is giving him an expectation of suffering, of hard work, like a farmer works hard, but they enjoy the harvest of the seed that they sow. Like a soldier who endures hardship, but yet wins a great reward and pleases their officer. Like an athlete who beats their body into submission, but the result is winning the prize. He gives these illustrations and these ideas that in life, in leadership, you're gonna see some trials. You're gonna have some obstacles. Which makes me think, I wonder if our life is not shaped by our vision and our dreams of what will happen in the future as much as they are by the obstacles that we overcome. I'm here in a pretty spectacular setting right now. I'm in a pretty special place. And what I've noticed about being out here in this desert place is that there is different grooves. There is different rivets. There is different shapes in the rock here. And what has shaped this rock is streams, water. Like your life, your life in many ways is like a stream or like a river, that it is guided and directed through different soil densities or what we could call oppositions in our life, different times of resistance, different obstacles that we have to overcome that either we shape or it shapes us. Sometimes there are things that we shape people in our lives and relationships that because of our our nature, our convictions and our values, we shape them. Then there are different seasons that shape us, that guide us, that direct us in life. And as I'm walking around here and as I'm looking around, I'm beginning to see patterns and shapes where streams have shaped the very rock formation and created different avenues for the water to flow. Soil densities that have created the different bends, the different uh, directions in which a river will flow and different kinds of soil densities, hard soil densities, softer soil densities. And I wonder if that is so similar to life and what Paul is trying to illuminate to Timothy. That through life, you could be shaping your life based off all the things that you want to achieve and all the things that you want to do in your life and the success status. Like by the year 2020, surely I'm going to have success. Surely I'm going to have this, 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 and this. But when you get there, like right now, when we're on the precipice, of a brand new year and a brand new decade and a year where we're meant to see with perfect clarity, maybe it's hazy. Maybe we're not where we thought we would be. But I wonder if like a stream will shake the rock. I'm wondering if over time, what starts out as a, as a creek could end up as a canyon. I'm wondering if what at one point was a grand creek ends up being a grand canyon. 
You see, what you'll find in your life is that you can walk through life being directed and being, being kind of guided by different soil densities, opposition, obstacles that you have to go through. And you can be so confused because I'm still looking forward and I'm not where I want to be yet. But if you take a moment and you look back over your life, you will begin to see that those very directions, those obstacles, those things that you've overcome have produced something so dynamic and a beautiful story that becomes inspiring to people's lives. That becomes the very thing that creates awe and wonder at how good your God is. When I look at a little creek, it's not that impressive. But over time, I look at a canyon, I'm in wonder. I'm looking at all the directions, the ebbs, the flows, the way the soil densities are created gorges and created craters. And now you've got this beautiful setting like this, the Grand Canyon, where people come from all over the world just to take photos with what was created through obstacle, what was created through opposition. I'm wondering if Paul's trying to illuminate Timothy, the Lord will help you know that over time, you could base your life off where you're not yet, or you can consider what you've overcome, which will be the most beautiful picture to any person that comes around you and comes under your leadership. I'm wondering as we step into a new year, into a significant year like 2020, what if before we look at what we're not, we could reflect on what we have overcome and we could consider that God is shaping something beautiful in my life, that like the Grand Canyon, that, God, that people would literally come to you considering what you've overcome, seeing where you are now and be so inspired that you have such a good God, that he's brought me through the fire, but yet the smell of smoke isn't even on me, that God has done something so dynamic in my life that I can step boldly into a new year with confidence and whatever comes my way, whatever obstacle, whatever opposition, I know it's going to serve the purpose of shaping my story for the glory of God. In fact, why don't I do that as we step into a new year? Why don't I pray for us? Why don't I pray that everything that we encounter this year and in the years to come will be shaping in our life? God, right now, I pray for Vive Church. I pray for our community all over the world right now on this day as we gather together on the precipice of a brand new year. God, would we be able to take a moment with our friends, with our family, with our loved ones? Lord, and would we be able to reflect back over our life, maybe even share stories of the significant things, the different years, the different new years that we've entered and the seasons that we've had to overcome. I'm talking about the trials of life. And Lord, would we in this moment see how it has shaped us, how you have used it for, for building us and to creating something in us so brilliant and so dynamic that you are glorified. And so God, we pray that we would be able to give you praise. But Lord, we would also create a confidence within us to step forward into the future with boldness, knowing that everything we're going to face is going to shape the future, is going to give great glory to a magnificent and dynamic God. Jesus, we love you and we thank you in your name. Amen. God bless you, church. Wow, what an incredible word that was, Thank babe. You. I hope that you were blessed by that yes. word as you were gathering in your home today and it really encouraged you. Yeah, in fact, if that word spoke to you, maybe you find yourself sitting in this, what am I even watching? Vive at home, I was invited into this house and I find myself watching this message. But if you've never heard a message like that, really that Jesus has a plan for your life, that Jesus can use even the negative situations of your life to direct your life, then I want to maybe suggest that God has called you today and he is setting you up to start the brand new year differently than you've ever started a year before. Yeah meaning starting in relationship with Him. The Bible really makes it clear that when you seek the kingdom first, when you put Jesus first in your life, then everything else will be added unto you. So I wonder if maybe you're willing today, I could pray for you. If you're sitting there right now and you're, you're, you're thinking in your heart, man, I really want to start. I want to make a change and I want to start this year differently. I want to follow Jesus and make Him Lord of my life. Then I want to pray for you today. So why don't we do something? Why don't you just close your eyes and bow your heads and I want you to join with me in this prayer as I lead you to Jesus. Jesus, I thank you so much that you have a plan for our life. Yeah. Jesus, we're so thankful that you call us, that you choose us. And Lord, I pray right now for each and every person watching, Lord, who is acknowledging they need you. Lord, that they don't want to start this new year the same way that they started this current year. Lord, I pray, Lord, for them right now as they make a decision to follow you. 
God, I pray you'd fill their heart with joy. God, give them vision, give them purpose. Lord, would they see the plan that you have for them as they step into relationship with you. And God, we pray that you would be glorified through their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we would love you just to raise your hand. You can push that button on the screen there. And our prayer team are waiting to pray with you Mm -hmm. and to connect with you and to help you on some next steps in your journey with Christ. Right. I also want to let you know and say, hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Hasn't so this been fantastic? Glad that you were a part of today. A, yeah, what a great experience, Vive at Home experience. Mm-hmm. We've got so much coming up in the life of Vive Church in 2020. One thing in particular, we have Vive U Come beginning. On. It's amazing. Our university is starting mm-hmm. in the fall of 2020, and the website's live right now. You can apply and you can uh, log in and say, hey, I want to be a part of Vive U. So we want to encourage you to do that. Mm-hmm. We've got a promo to show you, and we're also going to party today. So make sure you're standing. Make sure you sing the house down. Let the neighbors know that Jesus is alive and you're excited for the year 2020. What if I told you the future? A reality currently invisible, but so certain and tangible, the only variable is time. What if I told you what a church could be? Not just a description, but a bold direction that sets the rate of expansion, defines every expression, and elevates our expectation. A church that is progressive by nature, one that dares, dreams, asks, and unlocks human potential. 
What if I told you about a church that trains, teaches, equips, releases, empowers, resources, and produces leaders who serve as kingdom ambassadors in all spheres of life? Leaders who stand out and stick out, who know too much about the kingdom to live anything less than extraordinary lives. 